I know there are some of you who are so happy right now that I just bought this printer. And I think I'm probably happier than you, even though you guys have been telling me that I need to get it for like months now. And I guess all it took was me moving into a van to make it a reality. So today we're gonna unbox the roller printer and set it up. So if you just got a roller printer yourself or you're thinking about it, I'll tell you why I got this one over some of the other ones and we'll get this set up so that you know how to do it for yourself. First off, why the Rolo? There are a couple major reasons. It was pretty much between this one and the Dymo laser printer. And there's just a bunch of other ones like the Zebra, which is also really popular that Amazon itself uses at its warehouses, but that one costs like $400. And I really wanted to be around the $200 price point for a thermal printer, because I used to be at a $90 laser printer price point. The other major need that I have was a printer that can not only print out FBA labels, so one inch by two inch labels, which are pretty small, that are gonna go onto the units that I send into Amazon, but I also needed something that could print out four by six labels, which are the labels that you use when you're shipping stuff anywhere. So like UPS labels, you. USPS labels or the Amazon label that I need to put onto my UPS package so that when it gets to the warehouse they'll know what's in the box. So that's why it was really between this Rolo, the Dymo 4XL printer specifically, not the 450 label writer because that one can't print the big 4x6 labels or the Zebra printer and the Zebra printer was out like I said because of price. Now the question became harder because the Dymo as you can see is normally like upwards of 300 to 400 dollars. 408 is what it says is the normal retail. I don't really think I've ever seen them above 300, 350 so I don't really know if they ever sell for that price but right now they were on sale for 202 on amazon they're 250 at staples and i could have picked one up but i wanted to save the money and the roller was a little tiny tiny bit cheaper but that ten dollars wasn't going to make the difference for me in terms of what printer i would buy okay i'm super excited to actually get to setting up the printer and opening it up because i haven't opened it yet but i'm gonna real quick go through what the difference is between the Rolo and Dymo from my perspective. This isn't gonna be super, super specific, though I know some numbers, but these are the main categories of criteria that I was worried about when looking between these two printers. And honestly, you're probably not gonna make a bad decision either way. This is just why I chose the one over the other. In terms of price, the Rolo was a little bit cheaper. I think I got it like overall, including tax for like 200 bucks. It would have cost me like 230 to 260, depending on where I got the Dymo, which was about $202 at the time. The quality of print on the Rolo is actually worse than the Dymo. The quality is only 203 DPI or like dots per inch. And on the Dymo, it's like 300. And that's what Amazon says is the minimum that you should have on your small labels. But I know a bunch of people have used Rolos. Everyone has been telling me to get a Rolo. And it hasn't seemed to be any issues of people who use Rolo printers sending stuff into Amazon. This seems to be good enough. And as long as it's good enough, that's pretty much what matters. Ease of use is important for both the Dymo and the Rolo printer. You can use four by six as well as the smaller labels. I haven't set either of them up before, but from what I've seen, it's pretty easy to set up different types of labels in the Rolo printer as a super easy interface. You just turn it on, feed it a label, and just tell it to find out what the label is and it'll do it. And so they're both, I guess, pretty easy. But from what I've seen and from the people who recommend them to me, Rolo seems to be a little bit easier. Speed is a big difference as well, because the Rolo is actually much faster than the Dymo. It shouldn't make too big of a difference if you're not like just print out labels all day long, but it will print like more meters per second, I think is how they judge it, out of the Rolo than it will out of the Dymo. So fast and less fast. The size is relatively comparable. From what I remember, the Rolo is a little bit smaller and at least that's why I bought it. I'm not gonna write it down because I'm not 100% sure if that's the case and I don't feel like looking it up because I already own one of them. But I think this the Rolo is a little bit smaller overall. It's also just a little bit flatter. I just really want the smallest profile that I can, but then I kind of screwed myself because with the Rolo, you actually need something else to go with it if you're planning on using a roll of labels, not just like flat labels. And so this is another accessory that I had to get for like 10 bucks, which I included in like the price point that I bought it at, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it still was cheaper than the Dymo would have been for me when I bought it at the time, because the Dymo has that internally, but you can't use fan fold labels, which oftentimes are cheaper labels. So that's something we'll get to. So I'm just gonna say small. Dymo is also small, which is important to me because I don't have a lot of space. The long-term price is kind of where this edge itself out for me. You see, the Dymo is a great printer. Even if they're about the same price when you buy them now, you're gonna have to buy labels for them. With the Dymo, if you're using a non-Dymo label and something happens to your printer, your warranty is void at that point. But with Rolo, they say that they wanna earn your business, so they don't care whose label you use, their warranty will still be good. That means that you can buy off-brand labels, which turn out to be way cheaper. Let me show you what I mean with the labels that I just bought. But I'm gonna write this down first because I need to complete this, otherwise I would feel empty inside. 
What we're looking at here is pretty much price per label in terms of what I paid. The labels that I like to use are like the one inch by two and an eighth or one inch by two inch. And for the Dymo, you need to get this Dymo specific brand if you don't want your warranty to potentially be void. Luckily right now those labels are on sale. So for one roll of 500, it costs $12.49. Comes out to like two and a half cents per label, which is not bad. That's pretty comparable to the Avery labels that I was using before in my laser printer. But this is what I just bought, 12 rolls, 1300 per roll so 15,600 labels $39.90 which is three times as much but I bought 30 times the amount of labels so essentially I'm getting my labels for less than 0.3 cents per label which over the long term is so much cheaper if I would have bought one of those that would have lasted me less than one big shipment whereas this is probably going to last me about half a year that's a pretty big difference. And then that savings is the same thing when you're looking at getting the fan fold labels or other six by four inch labels. I got 500 of them for $16 here and I could have got 440 of them from Dymo for 1750, but that's only because they're on sale from $42. So if we're looking at long-term label costs, this is gonna be so much cheaper having the Rolo than it would be having the Dymo. And you could buy those for the Dymo, but it might hurt your warranty chances and I don't wanna play with that. So I got the Rolo. Let's finally open it up and see how crazy difficult it might be to set it up and get it going. And then we'll also get it set up with my inventory lab account so that I can actually start printing labels while I'm putting stuff into inventory lab to save myself some time. A better way to print the user guide. We don't need this. We got in here the power. Two amps. Good to know. I was looking for that information online and I could not find it. We got some outlets around the van so that shouldn't be an issue. And at the very bottom we also have the USB cords. So this will connect the printer to my computer. I wish they started making these in USB-C though because most of the new Macs and stuff are just USB-C. This is nice and compact. It does not weigh a lot. This is very light. I'm definitely gonna keep these so that I can like keep it safe while the van is moving around because we go over lots of bumps and shakes and stuff. Got some information for the product in here. I wanna make sure that I open it. I think it's this little latch over here. Pop it open. Yep, just product name and stuff. So, got this button right here, which I'm assuming is the main button. Inputs on the back to power on. Power as well as information from the computer. So the goal is now gonna be calm. Print from this Rolo on both the one by two inch labels that I have and the four by six inch label that I have. Something that says, like if this works. Cause you should like the video. First things first, I actually have to snag something from my laptop bag so that I can connect this into my computer. Here. Then for the power, I have an outlet right over here. Throw this into, and then this side will go into the Rolo. Nothing. Maybe I should turn it on. There's a beep. It's getting red on me, probably because I don't have anything in there. I think in here, these are where, yeah, that's how you open it wider and smaller for the type of label that you have. Well, let's start with some of these labels over here. I think that'll be harder to figure out, especially just how to print it off of my computer. And for those, we're gonna need to set this up. And the last piece, probably the most important one, which is this guy. So we'll throw this through this roll of labels here, and then this will just sit in here. Okay, this looks like it's the outfeed side. This looks like it's the infeed side, because this is where this part is. And then just put this in. Okay. What are you doing? So I think it's trying to determine what size label it is, and I'm pretty sure it figured it out now. I'm also about to lose like four labels. That's why you get the Rolo, so you can waste labels, because you got 15 and a half thousand of them. Now I want to see what it says on my computer about this printer. I'm just going to search up printers. None of those do I have anymore. They're all offline. Let's see what happens. I'm going to unplug and replug this in. See if I print add printer, thermal printer, USB. It's right there. So I'll just add that. Name it Rolo. Choose a driver. Don't know what to do with that. Do I have to download something? Software for this printer isn't available from Apple. Contact the printer's manufacturer. Dang it. That means that we got to open the little book. Oh, look, they even give you labels. I should have just opened this. Honestly, with the amount of shipping that I do, I probably didn't even need to buy all those labels that I did because how many labels is this? 15 labels. Actually, never mind. I'm probably gonna have to send multiple boxes. So this is helpful to have though. User guide. So we all look through. Continue to driver installation. That's what I need to do. Apparently I need to go to rollo.com slash driver. There's an intro video if you want to watch it, but I'm just going to go to install driver and I need to download the Mac driver. All right, now that we got that, we're going to go back over here to add printer and choose the driver. Select software, roll a printer. Yep, right there. Okay, looks like it's good. Okay, so now we got it installed. There is a sample one that we can do, so I'm actually gonna use one of the roll labels real quick. Should be pretty easy to change out. Just hit this over here, re-roll this guy. Thing about this as well is on the bottom here, we can put this just like that, and put that guy on there like that. 
What if you hold all the way down it for a while? Oh. So apparently, if you hold it down, it'll find out what size label you're printing. But first, we're going to print out the sample label that they gave us. Actually, what I'm going to do instead of printing out their normal thing is I'm just going to go over to Photoshop and create my own. I'm going to put it on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, though, so I can see if I can automatically resize it to the correct size for this printer. Got eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Likes are free. Gotta make it pretty real quick and export it. Let's see if we can print it. Print. We're going to print Rolo again. Let's see if it'll just print it correctly automatically. That was it. Why? Nothing happened. Try to print again. And we'll show the details this time. 100 by 500 is 4 by 6 inches. And let's print it now. Ooh! Well, we've wasted three labels to do that. That was easy to take off. That printed really fast. That is a good looking quality. So just in case you forgot, likes are free. Now let's see if we can print this. Even though it's in up and down mode onto side by side mode where our one inch by two inch labels would be. And if that's the case, I think that we've successfully done this video until we set it up in inventory lab. Gonna change this out real quick. Open this up. These all came really undone, so I gotta re-roll it. Print, paper settings. Whoa, that's a lot of different paper settings. Two by one right here. Let's print it out. Please work. <laughs> that's awesome. This is gonna make my life so much easier when I'm printing labels, because it's just gonna automatically print for me instead of having to wait all the time. Actually going into Amazon and printing them out, it's just gonna print automatically on Inventory Labs, so we're gonna have to make sure that that happens though, and go into Inventory Labs ourselves, and do that real quick. That's not a good spot. Here we are, we're gonna head right over into Inventory Lab. Don't look at my crappy sales. You go over here to my name, and then settings, and then you're gonna go over down here into printing settings. Right over there, right underneath general, you have printing. And then we'll go ahead and set up a printer. Whatever, I guess we'll try it. Inventory Lab Print is their new way to do it. it needs to be installed on the computer. We'll download it real quick. Don't steal my password, please. All right, installation was successful. And it looks like this is what it looks like down here. IL Print. All right, back over here to Inventory Labs. Found the Rolo. Label size two by one already. Oh, that's so nice that it does that. Orientation portrait, complete setup. That was so fast. I can't believe that. I can't believe it figured out what it was. I think it's because the Rolo knows what size label this is. That's the thing that it does when it goes in, in and out and out. It figures out what type of label that is. So we can print a test label, which we'll do, and then we'll change our label settings. So print a test label real quick. There it is. Oh, here's one. This is for a test. Oh, I printed two on accident. I guess I printed three. <laughs> These are the different settings that you can add on Inventory Lab for when you print labels. Labels will print for your items after adding it to a batch. That's essentially like what I did before where you would add everything to a batch, hit add batch or complete, and it would take you into the steps of actually creating your shipment. And I would go onto Amazon.com to print all my labels. This would just spit them all out for me, which could be really nice. If you're fulfilling it yourself, you can have them print that way as well. If you change the quantity, then it'll print out extra labels. I'm gonna add that one because I'm not always the best at exactly getting the quantities correct. And if I have to change it in a batch, it'll automatically print a label out for me. Whereas before I would have to go find where in the sheets the label was, print out a full sheet of labels with that label. Now I can just print out one of these guys. During scan to pack. So if you're scanning your items into specific boxes, which I don't ever do, you can do that here. And then if you provide an expiration date, it'll appear on any label for that item. I'm definitely gonna do that because a lot of the shipments that I'm sending out here probably tomorrow have an expiration date on them because it's all like sunscreen and stuff or supplements that I got from Walmart for like a buck, even though they get back like five or 10. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to click the adding to an FBA batch. So when I create the batch, it'll just spin out all of my labels for me. So let's create a fake batch real quick and see what happens. We're going to go over here to list, list and prep, and we're going to create a new batch. We're just going to leave it with whatever name it has and go down here to create the batch. Actually, we'll just keep this test one. We're going to send in five Rolo printers, Rolo fake, add that guy to the batch. And now, come on. Come on. It's added. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that is so nice. And we did it. So if you want to pick up a Rolo printer, check out the links down below. You'll help support the channel when you do. If you want to see everything that I'm planning on using while reselling, you can check that video out over here. Or if you want to watch me resell and ship stuff in Amazon, you can watch this whole playlist down here. It's got all my videos for that. Otherwise, don't forget to obey the label, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and also everyone who told me to get the printer already, you guys were right.